Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. In time, movie, thoughts. So, I guess it's pretty fortunate that it's age 25 that people stop aging at. And that apparently, in spite of, you know, money, or time, troubles, and whatnot, pretty much everyone here is, you know, a supermodel, or at least moderately attractive. There are not a lot of unattractive people in the world that this movie presents. And we're so fortunate that the women aren't averse to showing off their legs, so that's nice. The police are utterly inept when it comes to constructing a even halfway decent, you know, car blockade. blockade? I don't know what that's called in English. Anyway, yeah, that really, I don't know, maybe they just never had to deal with that sort of situation. I also wasn't entirely clear on why they could not stop the car. They seemed to shoot entirely at the windows. Were those windows bulletproof? Because there were a lot of people shooting at those windows. That is why Andrew Nichol does not do action that often, because that's what comes out of it. You know, that scene really... That was not the scene of someone who knows how to do action. It wasn't that bad of a scene, but it... Yeah, you know, there, there should have been some kind of, you know, maybe they should have shot for the the tires, or there should have been some kind of explanation for why the glass didn't, yeah. Speaking of explanations, I wasn't entirely clear on how exactly the taking time, giving time thing worked. At some, you know, at times it seemed like you gave what you wanted to give, you know, like you, you know, you reach, excuse me, you reach your wrist over to someone else that you're giving time to, or a machine, or whatever, and it takes the amount that you are giving, that you are, you know, agreeing to give, I guess. Then at other times, you know, when time is being taken, I don't know, was that like a willpower thing? Was it that the person stealing it just wanted the time more than the other person wanted to keep it? Was it because the other person was scared, so they let them have it? I wasn't entirely clear on how exactly that worked. I like that the film actually does poke a little fun at the whole, yeah, people stop aging at age 25, so, you know, everyone's hot kind of thing, you know, with this is my mother-in-law, my wife, and my daughter, and yes, I do realize that all three of them are clearly the same age and about equally attractive. And the, the line about, you know, you're wondering who she is, and you're hoping she's not my wife, that was, that was very nice. Also very nice, Amanda Seyfried's cleavage. cleavage. Was that even a Freudian slip? Does that even count as a... Anyway... I'm slightly torn on how I feel about Raymond Leon running out of time. It, it seems like it might be sort of anticlimactic. And I'm, I'm not sure the two should have fought because they're not that much on opposite sides. It's not like with the banker, you know. I actually went into the movie expecting Killian to be the bad guy. I didn't expect it to, to be the banker. Although, you know, in hindsight, I guess I should have figured. But, yeah, I. it's nice with the whole thing about, you know, the, the point made that the cops are not paid very much either, and, you know, the banker tries to, you know, bribe Leon, and Leon refuses, flat out refuses, you know, that was really good. And, you know, he outright says, I will, you know, put out a warrant for your arrest. And at that point, 
questions raised that are not answered, who exactly does he answer to? I don't know everything about how America works, but currently it does appear that the people who have an immense amount of wealth can actually get away with pretty much everything. There, there does not appear to be a lot that they cannot get away with. Especially, you know, I'm not saying that they won't maybe be arrested, but they will pay a lawyer who will work the system and they will get out scot-free. So, in the universe of this movie, is that different? Because there are actually, you know, there's a line about, you know, if you have enough time, you can buy anything. Or you can do anything, something like that. So... Does that work completely differently? Why was Leon so willing to... We never actually see the police chief, you know. Is he not on the... You know, because with the whole Occupy movement thing, it seems like the cops should really realize that they're part of the 99%. But they don't. They... They use violence. And... It would appear that this is because they are... You know, the people above them are trying to make sure that they do. And, yeah, I, I'm not sure why it wasn't like that in the movie. But, yeah, so, you know, he runs out of time. And I also like that, you know, there's this brief bit where it's like, Oh, no, we have to make a, you know, a difficult decision should, you know, which of us should live and which of us should die. Oh wait, there's time for both of us, let's just run. And, you know, that was a nice, you know, utterly consequence-free way of getting out of that situation. I'm also, they're also really lucky that the car didn't, you know, need some kind of voice recognition or DNA something. I did also wonder, evidently some people have what is essentially cell phones in this, in the universe of this movie. You know, the, the police force use them at points. I guess no poor people have them? Again, that, you know, kind of, is this just a world where, I'm, I'm not sure I saw any poor people using a cell phone, at least, in this movie. Correct me if I'm wrong. Actually, that would only make what I'm about to say an even bigger hole. The mother realizes that she has an hour and a half, and it's a two-hour walk, so she better run. I did, you know, the, the bit about, you know, the price just went, you know, the price just doubled for the bus ride. That was spot on. That was one of the things where he really hit the nail on the head with, you know, the the commentary. But yeah, so she runs off, and you know, and the bank just closed. So she runs off to meet her son. If she had called her son, because, you know, she knows that he has enough. She doesn't realize at that point, <laughs> she doesn't realize at any point, that he has a century. She does believe that he has enough to pay, you know, that extra half hour there. She doesn't call him and tell him, please come and meet me halfway or something like that, you know. And yeah, that... But yeah, maybe this is the world where no poor people have cell phones. Could be. I thought that the poor people being completely, you know... They apparently just handle the money, the time, really well. Not completely buying it. Yes, there was that one bit of, you know, you gave him a decade. He drank himself to death with nine years to go. Brief thing on that was anybody else... When I saw him look towards the brewery and look at his, his arm, I thought that was supposed to be a funny moment. And then, you know, you get back and, and the wife character says, he died. And it's like, oh, didn't mean to laugh at that. I mean, that, yeah, 
that could have been a little bit better handled. I mean, it was it's well established enough that he was a drinker and he clearly wasn't happy with his life. And yeah, I can imagine that he drank himself to death, but yeah, anyway. So he drinks himself to death. And apparently, time can't be extracted once you're dead. I, I did like that the movie was at least consistent with this point. You know, that we never see someone extract time from someone who's dead. Anyway, later on, apparently nothing bad comes of all this time being given back. Were they saying that, well, a decade is too much, but surely, you know, later on he... They talk about giving a year to a million people, you know, from a million years. Cartridge? I don't know what to call those things. Is that not enough for them to go mad with time, you know, and go on a buying spree? That, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I like that he opened the door to that issue because that is an issue some people if you have never had enough to learn how to not spend everything that you have then when you suddenly get a ton of it then you're probably not going to be able to at least not by yourself control your spending of it now also on the whole poor people being empowered thing. Near the end, we have a line about factories being left empty and the, you know, the, the poor, before poor people, now rich people are moving towards New Greenwich. Yeah. I don't have a problem with them moving on up to the east side. But were all of those factories just for maintaining the system? I get that the one factory we do see is producing these little time thingies. And won't those still be necessary? I don't know. Anyway. It's not about not working. It's about work with, you know, under fair terms. You know, you should get a good amount of, of wages. You should have some control over you. You should be safe at your job. You shouldn't be able to be fired at a moment's notice. Things like that. It's not about not having a job. You know, that the movie doesn't actually mention this, but the rich people in the movie and rich people in real life. I'm sorry. If you're not working, if you're not doing anything that you, you know, if you just have everything, if you don't work to get something, then that's a lot of potential satisfaction that you're missing out on. And a lot of rich people in real life who are dissatisfied are dissatisfied for that reason. You know, in the movie, they talk about, you know, oh, we never take any chances. That's also part of it. But if you also do not work, that's also going to, you know, leave you very dissatisfied. I thought that the gang, you know, the Minutemen were a decent enough addition to say, I. As it, as the movie progressed, the dude with the hat and the, the g gangsta gun thing really started to annoy me. You know, that got, yeah. Anyway, you know, the idea of someone like that, you know, the, this gang, the, the basic idea of it pretty good. And then, you know, very early on we have them established as very dangerous and they are, you know, stealing time. Although, at that point, he says, you know, at a later point, the leader actually says, you know, I don't go above my, you know, line or, you know, whatever. And he was gonna steal a century from that guy, I think. But yeah, anyway. 
we have them established, and you know we have, and and then you know later on they reappear and they're wanting to you know steal from this other guy who said I finally had time to buy this, and then they realize hey there's ten years on you know if we capture these two so we're gonna capture these two and then they you know re-enter there and again become a threat and you know the the way they're handled is also pretty nice you know because we have that establishment we, we have established that he knows how to trick he, he knows you know our will I think his name is Timberlake's character is able to beat someone else in the arm wrestling because he knows the trick to it but there's three people pointing guns at him so he can't just win but he wins and then he grabs this gun that we didn't know he had that was a pretty good because it was a tense scene you know and I don't know call me crazy that really didn't feel like an anticlimax to me the black cop changing his mind I don't know it just didn't feel like there was enough of that character for that change to occur. It just seemed like he wanted... Andrew Nichol wanted that change to occur in one of the cops, but he didn't develop any of them enough to do this. The guy has three lines, basically. You know, he is established as being inexperienced in the field. You know, he hasn't sacrificed 50 years of his life on this, so he has not yet, he is still open to other ideas, you know, he is open to the idea that what they're doing is wrong. The second line is him realizing, hey, you're not dead, you're not dead because you were given time by this honorable thief. And then finally he's like, we're going home, I'm turning in my badge, which is, which is gonna be my gun because we don't have badges here. We don't need no stinking badges. Yeah, I get what he was going for, and let's hope that that's gonna start happening in real life. That would be fantastic. But yeah, I get, it just didn't feel like it was properly established. I liked that Leon did come from the ghetto also, and that, you know, kind of the thing of, you know, that's how you get out. You start working for them. You know, you don't work your way out and then help others out. You change sides, basically. You you betray your own kind, almost. You know, that was a pretty good. And that's why he was so determined, and that's why he knew these kinds of things, and all of that stuff, you know. I suppose that pretty much covers everything. Justin Timberlake lost a ton of guy cred when he told Amanda Seyfried to put clothes back on. Yeah, I suppose that pretty well covers it, so interesting movie. And yeah, I I liked it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.